brought you to Hovland? Well, my husband, I would say he is also from Iowa, but he moved up here because he loved the area and I was in love, so I had to follow him. So I came to Hovland and I came to visit one time, came to visit a second time and never left and we've been here ever since. About three years ago, we were planting trees right along the river, and somebody noticed fish in the river, and, and there were steelheads that were 12 to 15 inches long swimming up the river. The, the water wasn't that deep, so they were in like a, like a riffle, uh, and the, their back fins were actually out of the water as they struggled up the shallow water. Well, I've fished steelhead in the Flute Ridge River for probably 20 years, uh, uh, primarily in April and May. And um, it has been, over that period of time, one of the better rivers, steelhead rivers on the North Shore, which are Lake Superior's migratory rainbow trout. Yeah, I guess over the years I've, I've met some really interesting people along the river. There was one father and son that has fished the river for probably easily 50 years, probably talking the father's time, it's probably pushing more closer to 70 years that they've been coming there. Obviously, uh, there's something there they like if they keep coming back year after year. The flute reed became kind of part of our way of life and what we love about it so much is that it connects so many people in this community together because it it goes through so many people's property and so it, it's kind of a connection piece between us and a lot of people. I was looking at the at the lake one spring when we had a, a, a kind of a normal snowfall so there was a lot of water in the river that as the snow melted and it was turning all of Chicago Bay brown. And I wondered if anybody else was concerned about what it seemed to be doing to the lake. And so I called our uh, Roger Hartle, who was then our local uh, soil and water district representative. And uh, he, he said, well, let's, let's find out. So we put a poster up in the post office um, saying that we were going to meet one Saturday morning. There were about 20 people that showed up. So we decided at that, at that meeting to form a watershed group. Um, and the rest is history. The problem that sediment causes for the fishery is primarily um, that it um, covers up spawning gravel and trout and I believe most, most cold water fish, the sort of fish that are going to live in a river like the flute reed, need clean gravel in order to spawn or, or clean rock substrate. And uh, when you have a heavy sediment load, you just always have that, that fine particles of clay settling in, in and among that gravel or over that gravel and uh, just makes it less productive for fish. This is a living uh, river and we want to help clean it so that the, the, the sediment isn't, isn't hurting the, the river and hurting Lake Superior. The concept of water is just such a connecting force because the water that's sitting right here outside of our house could have come who knows where from up in the mountains someplace way far away and now it's here in front of our house and then it's out in Lake Superior and then from there it goes way out into the ocean and then it ends up at my parents' house down in Florida. I mean, water is just such a cool connector of, of life forces and then of actual people. The, the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency in 2001 did a multiple year, um, they called it a lake basin study and they studied the whole North Shore and identified 10 rivers 
that were impacting Lake Superior the most in a negative way. And it's primarily all sediment coming down into the river. But a lot of this sediment is red clay, which naturally has a lot of phosphorus in it. And phosphorus causes, it's a nutrient for algae. And so we're getting algae blooms in Lake Superior that, that according to the old timers, we never used to have. Right now we have this large uh, Great Lakes Restoration Initiative grant and we're working to stabilize uh, some of these slumping red clay banks on the river that are contributing to the sediment and we're also replacing some undersized culverts that are causing a lot of uh, washout and erosion into the river. Uh, my name is Dave Stark and I am a water resource consultant uh, working on river restoration projects and rainwater harvesting projects. And the Flute Reed Partnership is who I work for. I am the overall project coordinator for them. Um, and they initiated the project. Uh, we wrote the grant for this. Um, so after I left the county um, and became an independent consultant, uh, I've been hired by them to, to coordinate the whole project. Yeah, these are called the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative Grants, um, and the, the grant proposal came out, uh, it's got to been at least three years ago now, um, and it was an initiative uh, basically to clean up areas around the Great Lakes. We had been doing some smaller projects on the Flute Reed River, working uh, with the Flute Reed uh, Partnership. Specifically, they had been doing a lot of tree planting projects um, and we were also involved with monitoring the water quality. So as we did that, um, the testing for the water quality, like a lot of rivers on the North Shore, were showing high turbidity or high sediment input into the river. And having that water quality data put it on the list and then also um, made uh, the river and the watershed available to, to go after some of these, these grant funds. My name is Carrie Berg and I'm the district manager of the Cook County Soil and Water. I started with working with the Flute Reed Partnership. They subcontracted our office to organize the engineering and designs and to select the projects that would best reduce the sediment on the Flute Reed. We had to select the project site so we walked the entire Flute Reed River and we collected the information the whole way along the river, the bank heights, we noted erosion, we did bank full measurements. Dave Stark, uh, the GIS specialist. Uh, he helped make a map of the whole Flute Reed River based on all our information which created it into a calculation. We were able to pick the priority banks based on that. The engineering team in Duluth and the technicians did the design plans and I got all the permitting. It was a rigorous permitting process with the Army Corps and the county and the DNR um, just due to fish restrictions. And then we bid out the project and we had actually um, Five people put in a bid and three of them were local, so we love it when we get to work with local contractors. And um, Laboda Grading got the low bid and they're currently working on the first bank project. My name is uh, Charlie Laboda, Laboda Grading. We uh, are road grading and excavation contractor. Uh, today we got a excavator here with a hydraulic thumb. We're using that to uh, install the tow wood structure. We yesterday were excavating a channel for that structure, uh, put the footer logs in which run parallel to the river and we're now installing uh, layers of brush and soil mixed together, packing that in and building up the to the top of the structure. So we're using a, like said, an excavator with a thumb, a skid steer with a grapple to move the brush around, dump trucks hauling the material out of the site. My name is Keith Anderson. I'm an engineer for the Soil and Water Conservation District. A uh, real brief descri description is we're um, using a tow wood, which is woody material at the toe of the bank, and sod mat at the floodplain elevation to re remediate or stop the bank erosion in that location. Our role is to provide oversight and uh, design assistance so that our design gets placed on the landscape uh, the way uh, it's shown on the paper. So we've got a contractor, a very good contractor on site, um, but they're, you know, they need assistance in uh, 
actually applying our design in the detail with all the elevations and the positions of putting them in the tow wood, the um, elevations, the cross sections of what the river is going to look like in the end product. So that's our our main uh, role on the site. The tow wood stabilization is basically taking large um, pieces of wood, large um, trees, and you set up a uh, kind of a footer log, and then we're placing those large trees into the river bank, um, basically trying to take the energy that typically would be going into the eroding bank and pulling it out. That um, tow wood mat starts that way and then there's also just growing vegetation that goes on top of that. So it does a couple different things. It's pushing the river away from the eroding bank, but um, you see in a lot of the pictures there are these kind of new creations of, of floodplains. So as you get up into those higher flows, you're beyond that year and a half interval for a higher flow the river has a place to dissipate its energy. So the tow wood pushes it away, gives it a place, a new floodplain. And so instead of coming in and trying to pull that riverbank back, which would you know, require a, a lot of material being moved uh, and wouldn't really be solving that problem, um, we basically let that natural, uh, that slope find its natural place over time. This work that they've been doing on the food has been pretty controversial in Hovland. There's a lot of people who just are of the mindset that you just leave nature well enough alone, and I think they're worried that um, all the work that they're doing is maybe going to backfire in the end. And, you know, in a way, I think that all the controversy is just um, the product of a people who really care about where they live and really care about the landmarks that. Um, surround them. So I think it kind of comes off as negative, but I think it's born out of just a love and a passion for Hovland and for the landscape. I haven't worked on any tow wood projects before. Um, our, the engineers and technicians we work with in Duluth have, they've done some on the Knife River and I think a few in other counties, but this is the, the first time I've ever seen this built and it's the first time any of our office staff, so we've been really excited about it. Um, just being through the whole planning process and it's nice to try some more sort of green technology. Um, you know, it's nice to do engineering but not have it look so engineered. It'll hopefully look more natural and um, blend in with the environment. Rock riprap, while halting the erosion in that particular location, does not do as good a job with uh, creating or improving habitats and then also um, spreading out the flood flows. The other thing is we're, we're putting the sod mat at the floodplain elevation so that when the flood flows come up, they have a, an ability to spread out and uh, further uh, dissipate those forces at the toe of the bank. So the, the, the rock does a really good job of stopping the erosion, but you can get uh, erosion at the flanks of the project. Uh, it tends to, um, in some, some cases, smooth up the bank and cause the erosion further downstream, pushing the problem further downstream. What we're doing is putting in these root wads, roughing up the bank, and consequently uh, slowing the velocity right in the near bank area. Again, providing really good habitat, holding the bugs, which the fish like to eat the bugs, and uh, also remediating the uh, erosion, bank erosion at that point. Yeah, this is a first time thing for us. This is a new new project as far as I know it's been done only once in Minnesota before uh, definitely not done in our area before and uh, seems to be a pretty cool project there's a lot more people on the site than we would normally be used to having here uh, we have worked with the local soil and water office before uh, so we know what to expect with them but uh, having Keith the engineer on site has uh, helped a lot he's able to check a lot of stuff for us while we're doing uh, somewhat doing a design and build with him. We had the set of plans before but having the engineer on site we're able to change and make it fit the site a little better as we go. Uh, Dave Stark, 
and the food read partnership people have been here helping. It's been really good having all these people on site working together. The Flute Reed River in, in, in the future, I mean, is this one project going to reduce all the sediment and everything's going to be uh, fixed on the Flute Reed? No, but I think through doing this work involving the landowners, there's more than just the sediment benefits, but I think that there will be a noticeable uh, reduction in the sediment loads to the river.